Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to perform self-correcting rack with a LangGraph. This is a rather advanced video, so make sure that you watched my introduction to LangGraph before. So what is self-correcting rack and why do we need it? Let's say we've got a user who asks a question. The question gets embedded and we make a similarity search against the vector database. We retrieve the top k documents, let's say 4. The issue is that we always retrieve 4 documents no matter what. We don't know if the documents are well suited to actually answer the question. This is why we introduced self-correcting rack system where an LLM evaluates each document if it's suited to answer a question with a binary score, yes or no. With that information, we can do whatever we want. We can rewrite the query in a way which might be better suited for retrieval. We can reduce the list from, let's say, four to only two documents. This is totally up to us. I will show you a solution with a rewriter agent. Okay, I'm in VS Code and here on the left, you can see multiple files. The file we need for this video is the crack dot ipyth notebook crack means corrective rack so corrective retrieval augmented generation just navigate into that notebook and i use openai so i import an openai api key you can of course use any other model too okay the first step is to create a vector database and put some data into it because without a vector database and documents insert in a database you cannot perform rack for this example, I will use Chroma as vector store because it's easy to set up and we can use it locally. Then we use OpenAI embeddings for the embeddings for our documents. Then we've got four documents. These are the documents which we will insert in our vector store. So it's about the fictional restaurant. So the restaurant is called Bella Vista. The owner is Antonio Rossi. It offers a wide range of dishes with prices uh, in a various range, opening hours, and also a little bit about the menu. So it doesn't really matter what's inside there, just that we have some documents in the vector store. Okay, now we want to create our vector store by using the from documents class method. We pass the docs and we also pass the embeddings function. And then we convert the vector store in a retriever. This provides a standardized interface for the retrieval of the documents. So let's run this code too. This may take a few seconds because we let the embedding model embed the documents. And now we can create our agent. So we're gonna use a custom agent state, which makes use of multiple attributes. So we store the question in our agent state. We store the grades. These are yes or no. And we store a list of them because if we three, four documents, we have like a yes, yes, no, yes. If three documents are suitable for answering the question. Then we've got the LLM output. This is what the LLM will create. We can also store that in state. Then of course we need to store the document somewhere and we do that here in the documents attribute. We also provide a little boolean here on topic. So if the question is in general off topic, we don't want to do retrieval. We just want to tell the user, sorry, I don't answer to that question. So let's create that I think a little bit more complicated state. And now let's create our functions. So the first one is retrieve documents. Here we have the state as argument. And from that state, we extract the question and we pass the question to the get relevant documents method from our retriever. And here we pass the question as the query argument. We retrieve our documents. We don't need the complete document to let the LLM evaluate it. So we only extract the page content attribute. So we've got a list of strings like we defined it here after performing that method. Okay, the next step is to create a classifier. This classifier is not yet for the documents, but it's for the initial question of a user. So we want to find out if the question is related to our restaurant or if it's off topic because the chatbot only should perform retrieval if it's related to a question about our restaurant. So we can do that easily with structured output. To do a structured output, we have to create a custom Pydantic class, which inherits from base model. And we have to provide a doc string. This is for the LLM to define uh, how it should evaluate that. So Boolean value to check whether a question is related to the restaurant Bella Vista. It's not really Boolean, but I think it's yeah rather Boolean. Let's say if it's yes and no. Though it's the same like true and false, but in my opinion, strings work better than just Boolean values. So I say we want a score, yes or no. And then we extract the question and let the LLM answer if the question is about one of the following topics, information about the owner, 
about the prices of Bella Vista opening hours and available menus. If it's not, then it should respond with no. If it's related to the restaurant, it should respond with yes. So this is how we make our classification. So we create our LLM, we use the with structured output method, we pass our own pedante class here, and this will result in a yes or no as the result when we run the invoke method. We pass the question here and we access the score attribute from that result and we store that in the on topic variable. So we get a yes or no in that case. And of course we return the complete state. So let's run that. And now we can use that on topic state to actually perform routing. So we create another function on topic router where we pass the state. We extract the on topic state here and make the lowercase. If it's yes, then we will return on topic. And if that's not yes, we will return off topic. So let's also run that. And here we make it very easy. The off topic response should be, I can't respond to that. We don't need another LLM call. We could of course, we could of course do that, but doing it like this makes the whole application faster and of course a lot cheaper. Okay, so next step is the same like before, but instead of creating the question, we now create the documents. We do the same like before. We create a custom class, which inherits from Pydentic. We provide a doc string and also the attribute. So again, it's core and we want to evaluate if a document is related to the question, yes or no. And then we create our document grader function. We will extract the documents from the state we will extract the question. And now we want the LLM to do this. You are a grader assessing relevance of a retrieved document. If the document keywords or semantic meaning relate to the question, grade it as relevant. Give a binary score, yes or no. So we only get yes or no from that. Then we create our prompt. So here we've got our system prompt, which is that string. And here for the human message, we've got the retrieved document. So this is a single document with new line operators and the user question and the LLM will answer with yes or no. So we use again with structured output, we pass the prompt with the language and expression language to the structured LLM and now we can perform a loop. So we loop over each document, we will invoke or call the invoke method, pass the document and pass the question and append the scores to this scores list. And after we are done with that loop, we now score this list here in the state. And again, as always, we return the full state. Okay, the next step is to perform the generation router and we have a look at the grades. In our case, we want to say only if all grades are yes, then we want to make a final generation. And if that's not the case, we want to rewrite the query. So let's do that. And now, of course, we have to create that rewriter node. So for, for the rewriter node, we extract the question and make a system prompt. You are a question rewriter that converts the input question to a better version that is optimized for web search. Okay, that's wrong. Of course, it's <laughs> retrieval. I made an error here. Look at the input and try to reason about the underlying semantic intent meaning. So here's the initial question. And now we want to formulate an improved question. Again, we do it like before. We use the rewrite prompt, pass that to the LLM and pass that to an output parser. And we store the rewritten question again, now in this question state. So we override the initial question of the user by the rewritten message of the LLM. So let's run that. And now the last node is generate answer. This is the final step. If rewriting was fine and all documents were graded with yes, then we can generate a final answer. So we will retrieve the question, all of the documents and pass that to a standard rec prompt. Answer the question only on the following context. Here we've got our context, these context m equals the documents and we've got our question. So we provide that for the LLM, we provide that to the invoke method, here's the question, here is the context to so all of the documents and we store the result in the LLM output dictionary key. Again, we return the full state because we want to update the complete state object. Okay, now we can use that functions to create our nodes and edges. 
So the first node is topic decision. Here we use our question classifier to decide whether it's on topic or off topic. And if it's an off topic response, we want to perform the off topic response, which just creates a string. I cannot respond to that. For retrieve documents, we perform the retrieve documents function. Rewriter performs the rewriter. Generate answer performs generate answer and so on and so on. I think this is pretty clear. For the edges, I think it's a little bit less clear. So we're gonna talk about that. For the off topic response, we're just gonna end everything because after that, nothing is done. The user gets its final response. For the retrieve documents, the next step is the document grader because first we retrieve the documents and after that we want to perform that grading step. We also got the conditional edge. So this is the topic decision. Here we use the on topic router to decide if it's on topic or off topic. So that function returns either on topic or off topic. And if it's on topic, we want to perform document retrieval. And if it's off topic, we want to perform off topic response. Okay, another conditional edge is the document grader. Here we use the generation router. If the router decides, so if all documents are yes, then we want to create a final answer. If not every document is yes, then we want to rewrite everything. And here we pass this conditionally to either the generate answer function or to the rewrite query function. Another edge is the rewrite query. This will get passed again to the retrieve documents because we of course want to retrieve documents again with the rewritten question. And of course, generate answer. This is the final step when everything worked for document retrieval. Our entry point is topic decision. Okay, quite complex, but I think it's still fine. So let's create this workflow. We compile our graph. Let's visualize it. I think this always makes it a little bit clearer. So here we've got the topic decision, off topic will off create the off topic response. And here on topic, retrieve documents, create the documents, the generate answer or rewrite the query, do that step again. And at the end, generate the final answer. Okay, so let's try it out. So we pass the question, how is the weather? And we only print the LLM output. The answer is here. I can't respond to that because this was classified as off topic. For on topic, we've got the following. We've got our question, who is the owner of Bella Vista? And we want to run the invoke method on that. Maybe you see the issue because this will not work as expected. So I added a little debug statement. So if you run that, we can see that now we get document grades are yes and three are no because we only have got four documents and only one is related to the owner. So no matter what, if the LLM rewrites a query, it will always be so similar that we don't get only yeses. So we can, we can stop that here and update this function a little bit. So I think it makes sense to think about how you want to evaluate the grading. And now let's update this, this generation router. And this time it checks if any of the documents is yes, then we will create a final answer. Otherwise we will rewrite the query. Still a little bit dangerous if the question is on topic, but we don't have any documents. So we could also implement, let's say a maximum iteration like three and then respond, sorry, I did not find any documents. This is of course totally up to you how complex you want to make it. This is just a little example. So let's run that again. Go down to the bottom and now we should at least see our final answer from the LLM. So this may still take a few seconds and here we can see this was filtered and the answer is Antonio Rossi. This is correct. Okay, great. You now learned how to perform RAG with agents, a so-called self-correcting RAG workflow. If you've got questions, please let me know that in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.